In this problem, we're going to prove this statement. If A is greater than or equal to zero, and B is greater than or equal to zero, then we have this inequality, one half A plus B is greater than or equal to the square root of AB. Let's go ahead and go through the proof. Let's do this by using cases. So case one. So case one is the case uh, where they're both equal. So let's say if A is equal to B. So in this case, then what do we have? We have one half, say A plus A, which is one half times two A, which is A. So the left-hand side is equal to A. And the right-hand side would be the square root of a times a. And that's equal to the square root of a squared, which is equal to the absolute value of a. But a is greater than or equal to 0, so this is just a. So in this case, uh, the statement holds, right? Because we end up with a equal to a. So we have a greater than or equal to a, which is certainly true because it's equal to a. So that takes care of that case. Case two would be if A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. And so let's just focus on the case if A is zero. So if A is zero, then we have one half zero plus B which is 1 half b. So that would be the left-hand side. And the right-hand side would just be the square root of 0 times b, which is the square root of 0, which is 0. So clearly, 1 half b is greater than or equal to 0, because b is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, if b is equal to 0, it's the same. So similarly, If b is equal to 0, we would have 1 half a plus 0, which is equal to 1 half a, which is certainly greater than or equal to the square root of a times 0, which there's your b, your b is 0, because this whole thing is 0, so that's no problem there. And if they're both 0, both sides are 0, um, so 0 is greater than or equal to 0. So if a equals 0 and b equals 0, then we end up with 0 greater than or equal to 0, so everything looks good. So really, really easy cases here. Both of these cases are pretty clear. Um, you can almost get away with not even having to just justify them. They're very, very clear. Case 3 will be the hard case. So case 3, but you know, it's worth mentioning them, so you should at least mention these cases. Uh, so totally worth mentioning. So the other case that's left is uh, if they're different. So the last case is if a is not equal to b, and uh, a is not equal to 0, and b is not equal to 0. In this case, they're both positive, right? Because by assumption, um, they're greater than or equal to 0. So if they're not 0, they're, they're positive. So let's suppose the result is false. So suppose, let's proceed by contradiction. So suppose the result is false. Hence, well, hence, what do we have? We have 1 half a plus b is less than the square root of a, b. So we have 1 half a plus b is less than uh, the square root of a, b. Uh, then we can square both sides. So then, if we square the left-hand side, we would get 1 fourth a plus b squared less than square the right hand side we just get a b let's multiply this out so we have one fourth this is a formula this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared where you square the first one multiply the a and the b and double it and then square the last or you can write it twice in foil but it's a familiar formula and this is less than a b and you know this four is kind of in the way. Um, let's let's go ahead and maybe multiply by the four. 
So we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and that's less than 4ab. Then we can subtract uh, 4ab from both sides. That'll give us a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, less than 0. And this actually factors, this is called a perfect square, perfect square trinomial. So this is actually a minus b squared less than 0, which is a contradiction, right? Because uh, this is being squared, so um, it can't be less than 0, right? It's impossible. So a contradiction. So the result must hold in the last and final case. So we've verified all the cases, therefore we are done. So thus the proof is complete. Thus the proof is complete. Nice little problem. Um, you know, taking cases makes it a little bit easier. Um, how do you know when to take cases? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I just thought that, you know, let's just focus on some easy cases first. So if a is equal to b, we can do that. If they're both zero, we can do that. And then uh, this case here, uh, we did it this way. So yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.